So the simplest formula really in terms of expressing temperature change, again, Q equals MC delta T. Now I'm going to use Q or little h interchangeably. Uh, Q stands for heat classically, uh, although little h can stand for heat too. Why not? Big H stands for molar heat. Little h is just going to stand for heat as a quantity, whether that's in joules or kilojoules. Now you can use calories. Uh, I don't think most pla any place really uses calories anymore. Actually, the specific heat capacity of water, which again I mentioned was 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius actually is one calorie per gram degree Celsius. That was a lot more convenient to use as a unit, but we use joules now instead. Because uh, uh, metrically, actually, joules makes a lot of sense uh, in terms of unit conversions and such. A kilogram meter squared per second squared, for instance. Hey, here's a question, and I think it's kind of, basically the most broken down, simplest kind of question you could be asked. So you got 10 grams or 10.0 grams of water, and it's heated from 25 degrees Celsius to 36 degrees Celsius. So you got 10 grams of water. This ain't 10 grams of water. You got water. You want to heat it up from 25 to 36 degrees Celsius. How much energy is that going to require? Okay, so you set it up. Now look at I set up questions like this all the time. Should you do this? Yes, you should do this. You should set it up like this. Heat loss equals heat gain, right? It's always something is losing heat to something is gaining heat because that's thermodynamically, you know, that's that second law which says uh, energy is going to move from areas where it's warm to areas where it's cool. Or if we're talking about energy transference, let's talk about where it's going from and where it's going to all the time. So I like to set my head when I do these calculations in terms of heat loss equals heat gain. Now who's losing the heat here? Well, we're not told. So the surroundings is just losing the heat to the system, the thing under consideration that's gaining that heat, which in this case is the water. So the heat loss by the surroundings equals the heat gain by the water. Now let's take that and expand upon it. The heat loss by the surroundings is going to equal MC delta T, which is because the water is undergoing a temperature change, you use MC delta T as a formula. If the water was undergoing a phase change, then you would use that NH, that moles times molar heat that we talked about. We're going to do that later, but not yet. So. H equals MC delta T, and we can calculate the amount of heat involved here when we plug into MC delta T. Well, what's the mass of the water? 10.0 grams. Hey, I didn't drop any significant digits when I wrote it in, the, in here, and you better not either, because if you've got a written response exam, your teacher, your professor, is going to be looking to make sure that you retain your significant digits, and you do absolutely what you're supposed to in terms of giving and reporting in the end a particular amount of them. So be consistent and don't be sloppy, don't be sloppy. So 10.0 grams times 4.19 joules per gram degree Celsius, that's per gram per degree Celsius, that's how you can write it, times, and here's the temperature change. Now, the temperature change, I like to put in the numbers for the temperature change and not do the calculation. I'll tell you why, because where we're from here in Alberta, Three significant digits, three significant digits, three here, three here, I'm allowed to keep three in my answer. But really, really, and the rest of the planet, which does it right, that difference right there is 11.0 degrees, right? And now, of course, that 11.0 degrees Celsius, which is the difference here, is still three significant digits. But if it was that we were doing this, and the difference really is nine degrees, or 9.0, that difference of 9.0 would have two significant digits and you would need to keep two in your answer, 4.6 times 10 squared joules. Okay, but the thing is, where I'm from, when we mark these types of things, we are given the instruction that, look, if a kid's going to put down the initial and the final temperatures, or final and initial temperatures, you always want to make your temperature change a positive, we'll get to that in a second, that's going to have right there, three significant digits here and here, so you just kind of just look at those numbers and then come up with in the end, three, three, and three, when you do this math right here, you get 461 joules and that's good enough to be able to say uh, as an answer with the significant digits. Now, let's take this concept right here and let's expand upon it because sometimes the formulas, well, they will, they'll get a little bit more complicated, well, more complex, but I don't think complicated, well, you'll see.